Hey guys, this is Raymond and welcome back to the Be Extraordinary Poco Poco blog and podcast. And today's guest, I have Violet. Violet, welcome. Hi, Ray. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. Another Legendary Fitness member right here. Well, whoop. So, Violet, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. So, my name is Violeta Rocha. I am a broker associate with Lifestyle International Realty and I'm also part of the Miami Association of Realtors Leadership Board. Um, so, I do a lot of different things for the board and obviously in the real estate industry. I've been in it for five years now. So. Five years and you love it or you want to quit? No, I love it. <laughs> trick I love question. It. No, it is a trick question. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been in the market for a while. I've seen it change a few times. Okay. Um, and honestly, it's, it's been, it's been a great learning experience, obviously starting from creating my own business and, you know, building my brand, my name and all that. So. That's pretty awesome. I mean, you're a mom there too, right? Yes, I do. I have a five-year-old daughter. Okay. She's five going on 21. Um, <laughs> huge personality, obviously way bigger than my personality. Um, but yeah, she's an aspiring mini realtor as well. That's awesome. So, so Violet, what made you say like, hey, I, I want to become a realtor. I want to be my own boss. Like, what made you make the change? Um, it was just, honestly, I had a amazing nine to five. Um, it did take me an hour and a half every morning to drive to work, an hour and a half driving back as well. And I honestly just got tired of it. Um, you know, I, I had a very good salary, um, but you know, just like anything, you always need the side hustle. So, you know, I started doing real estate part-time until obviously my part-time became my full-time and that was it. I mean, I wish I would have started sooner Okay. Um, you know, because I've honestly done well and I continue to expect to do even better every year. So, yeah. So it's just obviously it was extra income for me. That's awesome. And basically when you started, do you had any struggle like starting, like you were scared? Like what can you tell the crowd out there? Like they're watching and they're saying like, damn, like, wow, that looks like a badass realtor. But what could happen like that could make her stop? Well, I mean, I, I think we're all used to not knowing when our next paycheck is going to be right so you know you have a salary job you're either getting paid every two weeks twice a month whatever it is so you always know that your next paycheck is coming in and i think being self-employed you never know when that next one is coming so um to me that was my fear obviously i have a daughter um you know i am her only supporter so it was difficult for me to just let go of the fact of having to figure out when my next paycheck was coming yeah. Um, but then it, again, it also pushed me to do better and more because that way, you know, I created my savings account and all that stuff that now I have this cushion where I know where it's coming from, like, you know, and I push myself to make sure that I close every month. So, you know, I always think the fear is just knowing when you're going to get paid. And I think that's the hardest part of being an entrepreneur, not knowing when the next one's coming. So it's just making sure that you work hard and you work towards your goals and that's it. That's awesome. And there's a lot of mothers out there that, you know, they want to jump into their own business. What can you tell like about, let's see, for a single mother that comes in and say, hey, Valeria, you're inspiring me. Like, how do you do it? Like, what type of words you would say to that mother like that wants to do maybe, you know, get into real estate or do something else into baking or like their own fitness training company? Like, what would you tell those mothers out there? Get ready not to sleep. No, I'm, just <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. No, time management is super important. Um, you know, just making sure how your day is going, planning ahead. I mean, that's my biggest thing. Um, you know, I need to make sure that I'm planning for, usually on Sundays I plan my week. Um, obviously life happens, things change. So there's always room for, you know, wiggle room as far as schedules changing, um, but planning out as much as you can and, and going from there. Nice, and how do you look, like plan your schedule? Because you're a mother, you're a hustler, and you work out in the fitness a lot. I see it. And I see Eddie too. Don't worry, Eddie. <laughs> Shout out to Eddie. So what, like, how do you scale yourself? Like, what's a day in balance? Like a day in my uh, life. I yes. wake up at 5 a.m. every day. Um, I wake up at 5 a.m. Obviously, um, I have to drop off my kid by, you know, 730 at school. Once I drop her off, then, you know, most of the time I'll go to the gym right after. And then after that, that's when I start my day where I'm prospecting for my clients, following up. Um, if I have to visit associations or clients or anything like that, I schedule my day that way. 
Um, then I go ahead and I pick up my kid, do homework with her, and then after that, then I continue to work. So a lot of my days basically revolving around my kid and her schedule, um, you know, because obviously I do work a lot. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm present for her. That's and, good. you know, once she goes to bed, I continue to work until I'm done doing what I have to do and to start over again the next day. So your phone never shuts off. Like it's always 24 yeah. seven. A client 20. calls you at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Hey, I like that house. Yeah. Let's go see it tomorrow at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. I don't yeah. know how that schedule works for realtors, Listen, but 8 a.m. is when the lockbox is open. The other day it happened to me. I was showing at 7:30 in the morning, couldn't get in. So, Ooh. you know, so, yeah, I mean, I'm 24 seven as far as working. Um, my clients know that they can reach out to me anytime. I always respond, okay. um, you know, whether it's text, email, you know, anything like that. I, I'm, I'm always there and that's that's just what I do. I'm, I make sure that I'm there for my clients, that I'm an open book, answer all the questions, no matter how small or how big the question is, I'll always answer it with the truth. Yes, you always find a way to like take care of your clients because a lot of people don't get it. Like you can have like me, for example, I have that little camera. You can have the best equipment, but you don't have good customer service. You're not going to go anywhere. No, people love to see great customer service and results, good results. You can do both. But some people think because, for example, if somebody is behind a big, big company, the biggest company out of state is a realty, for example, but the customer service sucks. It doesn't matter. Right. 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 So. Yeah. What do you think about the market right now? What will you tell people out there that want to buy a house, like sell yourself? Like right now, like somebody comes and says, hey, Violet, I want to buy a house. Help me out. What will be like the perfect response? I mean, honestly, the perfect time to buy a house is whenever you're ready. You know, it's just making sure that you have enough money saved down for a down payment, for the closing cost. Um, you know, it's just you yourself need to feel ready for it. Um, and then obviously it's just adapting to the market. I mean, obviously the rates right now are a lot higher than we were seeing last year. Um, but at the same time, you know, we can negotiate the price down. So in the end, it ends up being a balance. I mean, it's just, there's less demand right now. So there's more houses for sale. There's less competition. Um, but again, it's just feeling ready to buy that house. It's a big step. Obviously it's a big purchase. Um, you know, you just need to be okay with doing it. and. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you're going to eventually own something that's yours and every monthly payment, you know, you're building equity for yourself and your future. Okay. And quick question, something that came to mind real quick, like if I go buy a house with you guys and a year later or two years later, I call you, hey, Violet, this is going on. Will you answer it? Be like, oh, I just finished with you already. You're not my client anymore. That is not the case with me, okay, um, you know, so basically I'm very fortunate um, that with every single client I've built a relationship, you know, it ends up becoming a friendship mm -hmm. just because I'm obviously spending a lot of time with them, helping them either become a homeowner or building them up to make sure that they can become one. Um, most of my clients at this point, just because I've been in the industry for five years, it's their repeat clients now, you know, I helped them buy the first one. Now they bought an investment property because I prepare them for that next step, you know, because, you know, building wealth, the real estate is the way to do it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even then, like they they refer me clients that they have because the service that I provided them was so good that they refer me their friends, their family and, and that's it. So I do think, at least with me, I mean, anything that involves people, you're in the business of building relationships and the more relationships you build, the better you are. So, you know, it, it's it's you never know. So no, it's not a transaction and done kind of deal with me. You know, it's it's a long-term friendship. It's pretty cool. And during those five years, do you ever have like a struggle, went through dark times and you're like, damn, like this is really hard for me. Like I'm going to quit. So I mean, what can tell the people out there? Honestly, I feel like I want to quit real estate every day, but it's, <laughs> it's not that I really want to quit. It's just, we always have deals that are a little bit harder than others. Yes. Um, you are always going to learn something new in this industry. Um, but I do think that the main thing and in order to survive real estate, um, it's to become adaptable. So, you know, whatever it is that the market is pointing towards, you just need to make sure that you become a master of your craft and learn how to overcome those obstacles. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's part of being an entrepreneur. You, yes. you need to learn how to overcome whatever is coming your way. That is correct because me too. Like people think, oh, Mr. Poco a Poco is perfect. No, I'm not perfect. I went through dark times and I'm right here. Like 
you know, every day that you wake up is a blessing. So guys, just keep going because everything like at first you don't want to hear it. At first you're like, oh, those just are words. But trust me, like I said it to myself during my dark times, like poco a poco things will always fall into place. I know I'm like a broken record, but hey, it has helped a lot of people out there. It could be simple words, but simple words can mean a lot. So Violet, like if somebody will come and be like, hey, like you inspire me. What will you tell those people that want to start their own business? Like what type of motivational words will you tell those people? Hey, things right now might not look as you wanted to, but poco a poco things will fall into place. What can you tell those people out there? I think that it's a lot better to work 80 hours for yourself than it is to work 40 hours for somebody else. Nice. So at the end of the day, obviously taking a jump and starting something that you've always wanted to start is a scary thing just because you don't know where it's going. Um, but I do think it's important that, you know, we follow our dreams, our goals, and we just keep pushing towards, you know, achieving them. So. That's correct. That's pretty cool. And Violet, like, what thing pushes you the most? Obviously, I will say your daughter, right? 100%. That's your inspiration. 100%. Things could look dark, but that's always going to push you to do yes. the best that you can. You oh. will always find a way. Yeah, no, always find a way. And, you know, it, not only her, myself. I mean, I like expensive things. I need to be able to afford <laughs> them. So, you know, I, I work hard for her. I work hard for myself. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that she sees how hard I work so that she knows that, you know, she needs to do it too. That's awesome. And thank you so much for be being here, Violet. I like those words, inspiring words. Hopefully all those mothers out there that want to start take inspiration from you because it's not easy, guys. And at first, things might not seem like they're going their way, but keep hustling like she said. And Violet, thank you so much once again for being here. Okay. And thank you, fam taking <laughs> Sticking together, motivational. So guys, thank you so much for being part of these blogs, podcast views and until next time remember guys to always be extraordinary in everything you do and everything will fall into place poco a poco thank you so much have a great day <laughs>